Well, we have the honor of hearing from Prophet Martha today. She's going to bring the word. We're very excited. And um, we appreciate you guys joining us online. Um, and you can listen through the podcast or through um, YouTube. You can watch the YouTube videos. Um, but we prefer to have you here, right here, so we can hug on your neck, see in person, hear about how life is going for you, and if there's anything that we can pray for you about. But um, we're excited to hear from Prophet Martha today. So let's give her a warm welcome. In Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, um, I'm so grateful and so thankful. But I want to start out with a praise report. Um, y'all know I have struggled with migraines for many, many, many years. And today is my 41th day without a migraine. 41 days, y'all. And I was having like one or two a week. And uh, 41 days without waking up and thinking, oh, no, it's going to be a migraine day is a wonderful thing. It is. And so um, y'all rejoice with me because that's pretty special to me. If you've never had a migraine, maybe you don't understand what I'm talking about, but it's pretty special to me. Um, And then uh, I'd like for us to remember um, Outreach Church, um, the Patriarch passed away yesterday morning uh larry patty's father and uh we all we all know what it's like to lose a father especially one of the house and um so father i thank you right now i thank you for outreach and i thank you for roy and patty father i ask right now that even as they rejoice that he's with you no longer in pain father we thank you that you are their healer. You're their source of peace and joy, even in the midst of this. And Father, we thank you for the life he lived. His name went before him. Everyone knew him. And Father, he truly was a delight to the body of Christ. So Father, I ask that you would be with the family at this time. And Father, as the body of Christ surrounds them, I thank you, Father God, that they see love and compassion and action through the body. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I want to talk to you today. How many of you know who the Lady Dorcas was in the Bible? Maybe one hand went up. Two, three, Dorcas. Okay, well, let's turn to Acts chapter 9, and we're going to read from 36 to 41 because I want to give you some background on this wonderful lady and how she is a picture of the church, even today. Um, And in Joppa, there was a certain female disciple by name Tabitha, which interpreted is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and kind acts that she was doing. Now, one thing about this woman, her name went before her. She was known throughout her her community for her compassion for the poor and her giving to them. Now, That's pretty special. You know, somebody that's so compassionate and giving, the whole community knows who this person is. And it uh, it came to pass in those days, she having ailed, died. So this kind woman full of generosity and acts to the poor, I'm sure the poor were suffering because this particular woman was known for helping them. And she... um, was raised, as, as it goes on, it says, and it came to pass in those days, she ailed, having died, ailed, died, and having bathed her, they laid her in an upper chamber. And Lydia, being nigh to Joppa, the disciples having heard that Peter is in that place, see him, sent men unto him, calling on him not to delay to come through into them. So in Joppa, there's a woman named Lydia who obviously knew Dorcas, and she hears the news that Peter is in the area. Now, Peter already has a name, doesn't he? Peter's walked on water. Peter's one of the apostles. Peter's done this. Peter's done that. So they're saying, come on, don't delay. Don't delay. And so what does he do? And Peter, having risen, went with them 
when, whom having come, they brought into the upper chamber. Now, it's interesting, a lot of things go on in an upper chamber, aren't there? A lot of things happen in an upper chamber. And I've, I've read many times where upper room, uh, boy being raised, upper chambers, or chambers. So it's important that we understand that concept. A lot of us need to get into an upper chamber. We need to get there so that God can do whatever he has to do, and sometimes what he needs to do. So they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by weeping and showing coats and garments, as many as Dorcas was making while she was with them. So there were a lot of people that were mourning her loss, and they were even showing the wares that she had done for the people that were poor. She was showing them to Peter. They were showing them. And then there's a verse that comes. And Peter, having put them all forth without. So what did Peter do? He threw the widows out. He threw all those that were mourning out of the room. Sometimes we need to have our widows removed. Because do you know what they do? A lot of times the widows, the widows are the ones that have, um, I wrote it down, um, When the widows are removed, a lot of times widows have what? They have old memories. They have memories of the good old days, the good old church, the good old whatever. And so the first thing he does is removes those particular people from where she's at. Sometimes miracles can't happen in your memories. They can't happen in your memories. So... He bowed the knee, did pray, and having turned unto the body, said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes, and having seen Peter, she sat up, and having given her his hand, he lifted her up, and having called the saints and the widows, he presented her alive. And it became known through all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. And it came to pass that he remained many days in Joppa with a certain one, Simon, a tanner. The reason that this is such a picture of the church, and I'm I'm going to get into it, um, like I said, her compassion, but she also had a name. It wasn't just Dorcas. She was called Tabitha. And in the Arabic, it means a row. But I want to tell you the position that the church is experiencing right now. Just as Peter raised Dorcas, so Jesus raised us from the dead and trespasses of our sin. Did he not? He did the same thing. Our beloved is heaven's row. If you look in the Song of uh, Solomon, Song of Solomon 2.9, it says, and here comes our beloved, the row. He's coming. The husband of the church, there's no doubt about it, Father is uh, is the husband of the church. He's the good shepherd. He's also the good Samaritan. And she has a form of being a Samaritan, does she not? Because she took care of the poor. She took care of those who had nothing. She was generous to a fault. She even clothed them. Church, we got some things to do, don't we? Uh, it also um, shows her compassion for people. It did matter. But Dorcas is a picture of the church. As she sits, and where does she sit right now? In the mercy seat with Father God. That's where we're seated. In heavenly places, we're seated in the mercy seat. And in the mercy seat, the throne of grace from that rent veil, because you and I both know the veil has already been rent. And everything that comes through the rent veil is of God. You know, people can say, oh, oh, you are such a good person. You can't be good. You can show goodness but only God is good. Only God. You can be kind. You can't be kind. God equals kind. You can be, you can show kindness. There's another thing that God is equal to. It's not just, he he equals it. He personifies it is generosity. You can be generous, but God is generosity. In all of our lives, if you don't believe it, just take a moment to look at your life and see how generous God has been with you. That's why we should be generous in our giving. 
we should never not give. If an opportunity ever arises, we should always give because we are reflections of Father God. From that rent veil, she is releasing compassion. Her ministry was marked by faith and love. Our ministry should be marked with something. How well do people know you? When they see you coming, do they run and hide? Or do they want to go, hey, come on over here. Let's do this. You know, that's, that's what we should be reflecting. The other thing that Dorcas did when she saw Peter was she set up. According to Acts 9.40, it actually says, And Peter, having put forth all without, having bowed the knee, did pray, and having turned into the body, said, To Betha, rise, she opened her eyes. And having seen Peter, she sat up. When the church sees and experiences real apostolic ministry, guess what she's going to do? She'll wake up from her sleep. There are a lot of people running around calling themselves apostles. They get their degree online, I guess, or whatever. Yes, I'm the apostle. Well, true apostolic ministry means that you're going to cause the church that is sleeping to rise up. You're going to cause her to rise up because true apostles raise things from the dead. Don't they? They do. And this can only happen after the weeping widows who are living on past memories, local churches who have no husband are put out of the room. Now that sounds, hmm, but if your memories drive you to stay in one place, you can't go forward. You can't. And you'll stay buried under those memories. You will stay buried under there. Trust me, this year has been one of the hardest I have ever experienced. I'll be honest with you. When Jerry first left this planet, I wanted to go too. I didn't want to stay here. My kids can tell you, I, I really was. I was in bad shape. I didn't come out of the house for weeks. They forced me to eat. Um, I was on heavy medications just to function. And um, if, that, if it hadn't have been for the kids, and really my grandkids, I don't think I would have survived. I really don't. Matthew sat down with me many times and said, Mom, Dad wouldn't want this. There's a purpose for you to continue on. And then when I w I'm by myself, like when I'm by myself, I would just, all the memories of Jerry would just come flooding back. I still have days when I cry. But my days are better. They are better. I'm eating better. I'm sleeping better. I'm around people more. Um, and thank you all for the wonderful party. That was truly amazing. And didn't we even have a surprise? OT's mother came from Nigeria. I was so surprised to see her. But she just looked wonderful. And if you don't know anything about her, she had a major stroke in the United States. She lived with the, the CPS for quite a while. And now she can actually walk. She still has some issues with her arm. But bright and alert up here. And it was just really good to see her. As... The picture of Dorcas stands out to me because a lot of times I've, I've walked through some of this, and I know y'all have too. I know y'all have too. You've had your own way. We all had our own way of grieving. Mine was different from my kids. And I was one of those widows that would have stayed in the room and just mourned and mourned and mourned until an apostolic ministry put me out of the room. Now, you might say, oh, that's kind of harsh. No, it brought me life. That's what it did. It brought me life. Do you know that Dorcas is laying there, and when she opens her eyes, having seen Peter, it says she sat up and had given her his hand. This is something that the Lord really surprised me with. When we it's when we can receive his hand, the five-fold ministry. Because his father, as Jesus reaches his hand in, he's given Dorcas everything he's got. Five-fold ministry. 
How many of you remember? What is the thumb? Apostle. What's this one? Pastor. Okay. So he's saying to Dorcas, I'm giving you everything, and that she receives his hand. You have to receive the fivefold ministry. You have to. It's not like, um, well, I don't like teachers because they teach crazy stuff for. I don't like evangelists. They're too, woo. or I don't like prophets because they read your mail. You can't pick and choose the hand of God. You receive it all. You receive it all. Just as Peter turned toward the body of Dorcas, and he did, it says, he did pray, and having turned toward the body, he told her to rise up. Just as Peter turned toward the body of Dorcas, the Lord will turn around and have compassion on us. One of the marks of our lives should be compassion. It should be love toward others. And as the church, we should represent the five-fold ministry of Father God, and out of it should flow compassion. Compassion is not an easy thing to do. Seriously, you can cry and act like you're compassionate, but that's not compassion. Compassion is strength. It's strength in the midst of storms. Um, Melody was telling me, and isn't it good to see my beautiful daughter, my grandkids? It's so nice to see. I was surprised. They didn't tell me they were coming. Um, but um, Melody was telling me that um, when Larry, Larry, Mr. Larry had a heart attack, his wife was on that floor for 20 minutes doing CPR on him. 20 minutes. Now, if you've never done CPR, 30 compressions, take five seconds, two breaths. 30 compressions, two seconds, do it again. And um, I took the CPR course, and my arms were hurting so bad. But my little thing was alive. My little thing was alive. And the CPR instructor said, Martha, yours lived. He said, I don't know what you other 10 were doing, but Martha's yours was alive. <laughs> and I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so I got my certificate. But it's not a fun thing to do. It's not. And sometimes I feel like the church needs CPR. I think the church needs some CPR. I think that we need to maybe lay down and let Father resurrect us, much like he did Dorcas. And when she was raised up, she continued doing everything she had done before and better. Because once you've been touched by the hand of God, you can't stay the same. I want to pray. I know it wasn't a long message, but it was something that the Lord gave me. I hope you were blessed by it. And um, I um, am so grateful. I really am. I'm grateful that I'm still here. And you know, a lot of us could not be. <laughs> and um, I'm grateful I am. Um, and I'm grateful that we have the ability to have breath in us to praise Him. That song today, there's a lion inside of your lungs that reminds me so much of my husband. Every time I hear it, I can feel Jerry. I can feel him right with me. And um, he used to tell me all the time, Martha, there's a lion inside of you. Especially when I was very, very... I wanted to be by myself. I didn't want to talk to people. I grew up very, very alone. Books were my best friends. I wouldn't go out and eat with anybody unless there were only like 10 people in a restaurant. So we had to go out at 10 o'clock at night. Um, and I was just real backward. I, I was, had very low self-esteem. But he said to me, Martha, there's a lion in you. And he truly was my hero. He pushed me to be more than I could ever be. He did. He knew my truths. God knows your truths. God knows what you're made of. God knows you at your best. He knows us at our worst, doesn't he? Father, I thank you so much for today. I thank you, Father God, that you are equipping us to be more like a Dorcas. Father, that we would have compassion, that we once again would let the fivefold ministry come into our lives and raise us up. 
Father God, that we would be ambassadors of your kingdom. Father, I thank you for every person in this room. I thank you, Father God, for your wisdom and grace that you have given to each and every one of them. I thank you, Father God, that as they walk out, they become you and flesh. Father, I bless them. I give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. Have a great week. Thank you so much for bringing that word. If it's blessed you, please like this video and share it. Um, but like I said earlier, we would love to see you guys in person. And um, I mean, wouldn't you love to hug on this beautiful lady here? I know I do all the time, but um, we love you all. Be blessed. Join us next week and we will see you later.